Hi friends, in this video I'm going to talk about some apps which I use. Now the first app which I use is the Brave browser. I use this browser because essentially this browser it has a built-in ad blocker and it also has an anti-malware and it also blocks some cookies on websites and cross-site cookies and stuff like that. And this Brave browser is also known as a privacy browser because like it doesn't sell your data and all of that. And there's this one feature which is optional, but in that feature, you can actually like receive advertisements. So instead of like companies selling your data, then they'll know like what advertisements they give you and they get profit from you watching those advertisements. In the Brave browser, they can give you like advertisements and just by clicking like the X button on an advertisement, you get a small amount of profit from that. And that profit is in terms of a cryptocurrency called BAT tokens, which is like the browser kind of cryptocurrency which they made. And BAT tokens actually stands for like Brave Attention Token. But like that part is optional. So if you don't want any like advertisements, you can just like close it off. And I have like another video which I made, which is actually like one of my earlier kind of videos in YouTube. And I made a video talking about like why I use a Brave browser. It's somewhere over there. It's not that good of a video because it's one of my earlier videos. But yeah, if you want, you can check that out. And Brave also has like a Chromium interface. So if you want, you can actually like make everything look like Google Chrome. But if you want, you can also change it so it look like DuckDuckGo, which is like another browser. And yeah, there are a lot of interfaces which you can choose, which is quite cool. And since I'm doing computer science, I also have Visual Studio Code. And honestly, like Visual Studio Code is the only like text editor which I use for all my programming. So yeah, if you are a programmer, I suggest like you should use Visual Studio Code because it's quite cool. And like for my videos, I actually use Lightworks to edit my videos. And like the number one reason why I actually use like Lightworks is because like Lightworks is free. And like I'm all about like free apps, to be honest. And it's also easier to learn because like there's a lot of YouTube videos like explaining like how to like edit in Lightwork. And like I feel it's much easier to learn compared with like other video editors like Adobe Premiere Pro and like After Effects and like Final Cut Pro and stuff like that. So yeah, if you're a beginner in like video editing and like you want something free, I suggest like you should use Lightworks because it's quite fun. And I also use OBS Studio to like screen record whenever I want to screen record stuff. And yeah, I suggest like if you want to screen record your screen, there is also like an inbuilt kind of keyboard shortcut for Windows, which is Windows Game Bar to actually like record your screen. But like if you want something a bit more professional and stuff like that, I suggest you should use OBS Studio. And it does have like a steep learning curve to actually like learn everything. But like once you actually understand how to use it, you can basically just use the same settings and same everything to like record literally everything and i also use microsoft 365 because like microsoft 365 is free for all students and it comes with like excel word powerpoint and outlook and it also has a one terabyte of OneDrive, which is quite cool and i also use the flora app on my phone and this is like for studying kind of purpose because like if i want i can like just put like the time which i want to actually like study for so it might be like 25 minutes and like after those 25 minutes are up, it'll show this kind of plant which grows because like you study for those 25 minutes, which is quite cool. So if you want an app to like time your studies and all that, like you can use Flora for that. And the antivirus software which I actually use for my laptop is actually Bitdefender. I used to use Kaspersky, but like now I realize that Bitdefender, it actually like has more features than Kaspersky and, and it actually like served me well in like real time protection and stuff like that. But the thing is for Bitdefender, you have to like pay for it. But if you want like a free antivirus software, Malwarebytes is also a good option, I feel. It does give you a seven day free trial or something like that when you first start. But after that, you'll just be using the free version. But like if you use the free version, you won't have like real time protection. And I also have a password manager. I use Bitwarden for that because it is free. And Bitwarden is actually like quite good for me. I kind of love it. I also made another video talking about password managers and all that and that video was actually made quite some time ago. It's somewhere over there. So if you want, you can check that out. And in password managers like Bitwarden, it basically has a master password. So you have to like remember that master password. So you can think of it at like a vault. So you want to like take something from a vault, you have to remember like the combination of like your safe essentially, which is basically your master password. And like all of my passwords in inside are now randomly generated. And I actually like don't remember any of my passwords, which I think is kind of good as well, because that also means it's a very strong password. And I'm also going to show some website. So the first website, which I'm going to say is, have I been owned? And that website basically says, have your data been like distributed without you knowing? And another website which I'm going to say is how secure is my password and 
in that website it basically says like how how strong your password is essentially an extension that if you want to use but i don't personally use is dark reader and this is an extension if you want like everything inside your web browser to be like dark theme and stuff like that so if you like dark theme like you can use dark reader and for for maths i just like to say that there are a lot of online calculators out there for you to help you with like math equations and stuff like that some examples are like wolfram and like symbol lab and honestly i use those for my exams so whenever there is like some kind of like complex integration or like any kind of complex kind of math stuff i just use those online calculators to help me and like for studying there is this website called i miss my cafe and that website basically like gives you some kind of sounds like a cafe so so instead of like going to a cafe and stuff like that you can just listen to those sounds of those cafe kind of noises so it might like get you to the vibe of studying so yeah and i just like to say that i have a lot of games also which i play and i think that is also important in studying because you can't be studying all the time and like the games i'm playing right now is like call of duty and clash royale in my phone take some time to play some games as well or like just take some time to like chill and like this is just like a quick kind of tip if you like write an essay in like microsoft word and you want to check if it's like nice and all microsoft word has this feature where you can like read everything aloud so you can like spot any kind of like mistakes or like any kind of sentences which you want to change to make it better and stuff like that and i also use genius scanner to like scan anything which i want and to make it like into a pdf format because genius scanner is kind of nice like it makes everything kind of clear and it's very simple to use so if you don't have like a scanner in your phone or anything like that i suggest like you can use genius scanner to like scan all of your work to be in a pdf form and i also use video speed controller to like speed up any kind of videos in like my lectures and stuff like that and in video speed controller you can like increment the speed like every point one so the normal speed is like x1 speed and you can also increment it so it'll be like x1.1 and x1.2 and basically you can just increment it until infinity which is quite cool actually so if you want to like speed up your lectures you can use video speed controller for that and basically that extension has always been working for me for any kind of video so yeah and also i just like to say since i'm all about free kind of apps and stuff like that because i can't afford paid ones I also listen to audiobooks but the audiobooks which I listen to are not from Audible but essentially like you can actually go to YouTube and search up like any kind of book and just type in audiobook at the back so like if you want to like listen to the Harry Potter on an audiobook you can like just search up like Harry Potter Chambers of Secrets audiobook and essentially there will be like a YouTube video which basically narrates the whole book which is quite cool and I think there's a lot of like audiobooks you can find in YouTube. So yeah, if you want you can check that out. And lastly, I want to talk about Notion. I used Notion for a lot of stuff and I also made a Notion video previously. So if you want you can check that out. But let me show you my Notion setup. Over here, these are where I write all of my YouTube ideas and all my notes in. So this is a database because it has all of these pages inside each individual row is a page but the whole thing is a database and if i just press on one of them you can see the notes which i wrote inside and i also have some blog kind of ideas which i've written before and these are some of the stuff which i've written and as you can see the tags i have a completed tags but i also have another tag called idea and stuff like that and i have a date just to like say what date i've actually completed everything and I also write a lot of my university notes also in Notion, like this, with some toggle lists which I have as well. And like everything in Notion can be done with just by typing slash. By typing slash you can see all of the functions in Notion. And I like really feel that you should have like a go in using Notion and see how it feels for you. It might be tough at first because it does have a high learning curve but like once you get used to it, you might enjoy it. Alright, that's it for this video and thank you for watching. Goodbye.